Hey everybody, it's another beautiful 73 degree day outside, so we're on the patio and we wanted to show you a couple other things. Um, another budget friendly toy that I found at Goodwill and you can keep your eye out for are these little toddler activity centers. Um, this one's called the Zany Zoo. Uh, I found this one at Goodwill. It was under, I want to say eight bucks. Um, I love these things for the birds. Uh, Data has just gotten used to this one and is now interactive with it. It's made out of really good quality wood. They're, it's really thick. Usually if you were to buy these from a website or brand new, they're going to cost you upwards of 40 some dollars, maybe 50, 60 bucks because of how thick the wood is and it's all, um, it's all made of wood. Everything on here is, is this really thick wood. Um, it's kid safe paints and everything. So, uh, the way I was taught, told from my vet and other people who take care of birds is if it's safe for kids to chew on and stuff, then it's safe for your bird to chew on. Um, but as you can see, there's lots of interactive things for them to do, twirly doodads and the doors open and close. He's been playing with that too. Um, so lots of moving parts and stuff for them to play around with. Right now, he's trying to figure out how the beads work. He's gotten them to move a couple times, but mostly he's trying to get them off. As you can see, he's he's been chewing on it and he still hasn't successfully broken one off. So that says something about how strong the wood is. He will get one. I am not I am not saying he's not gonna get it eventually, but he hasn't gotten one yet. Um, the only thing that's broken off so far is one tip of a rhinoceros's <laughs> little horn there. And that's the only thing that's broken off. And that was Rio that actually got that off. And that was a little while ago. To clean it, when I brought it home, I um, sprayed it with some bleach water and then scrubbed it down in the shower with some soapy water and then just let it dry out. Um, yeah, so that was under eight bucks. I wanna say it was like 6.99 and then I always round up and I probably had one of those coupons for, you know how you can get coupons if you spend so much but i don't think it, it works for that because it was under ten dollars um but i probably had bought it with a bunch of other things so i i shop goodwill and other thrift stores all the time and then the other thing we were working on today is i'm wrapping i don't know how i'll be able to show you this though with one hand and a camera so i'm wrapping the uh cord the paracord onto this pipe. Typically I use wider paracord for this activity, but this was a gift um, from, not really a gift, it was just something my husband had in storage and he wasn't using it anymore. And I'm all about reusing product and not throwing it out. I'm gonna see if I can prop the camera here. See if you can kind of see a little. If he stops bouncing around, it might stay. But he's really excited to be outside. <laughs> Okay, that might stay there for at least a couple ties. And like I said, you can see these videos on YouTube and stuff too. I like to put my cord into a ball just because it's a little easier to work with than it is in a wound up mess that it comes in. It doesn't really come off the, the way, the way it's bound, I don't find it easy to work with. Um, so for this pattern, I'm going from behind and then I just take the ball and put it through and that's it that's that's how this one works the important thing with this design the spiral design around a pole is one make sure you're going in the same direction um, when we get back around i can show you what it looks like if you accidentally go a different direction and two unless you want that pattern it makes a neat pattern but the sailor in me won't let me do it um, but it could add some variation in the tw it adds variation in the twist which you might want for your birds um i just we were taught to do it this way all one way and if i go the other way it just messes with my ocd and the sailor in me so i've always done it this way 
Um, I might be able to get over it someday, but anyway, <laughs> I can't do it that way. Make sure you're still able to see what I'm doing. Yes, you can. And then always make sure it's nice and tight too. And you just do that basically by pulling back on it nice and tight. And then you can always, you can see it's tightening up as I pull on it. And you can always twist it too to make sure that it's tight as you're twisting and it tightens up. So here's, uh, let me get at least one, maybe two more in and I can show you what happens if you start to go the opposite direction. Get that nice and tight. Uh, I can show you probably on this one. So if I were to bring the rope on this side now and start this way, and again, you might want this for some variation, maybe count out the patterns and which way, you know, so it's even and which way you're gonna go. You might want this for some variation in the pattern on your, on your, um, pattern on your perch for your bird's feet. Just, you know, a little variation that you might like that, but I just can't do it. <laughs> It's not how we were taught to do it, so. But as you can see, it makes an interesting, in here, it makes a, oh, it's kind of hard to see because it's black and the backlighting, so I did a different, put it up against the colors here and that might work better. There we go. So, so it makes a V and it starts going in the opposite direction. So maybe if you counted that out and a pattern that you like and you could do that it was a zigzag pattern and it would look really cool I can't deny that it's just against my training so my sailor brain won't let me do it and then when you get all the way across I've shown you guys this one on the smaller section but when you get all the way across on a larger perch it, it looks like this as long as you go nice and tight it looks like that and then I always burn the end of the paracord and just press it down tight. I didn't on these because it just left them something to chew on and they kind of like chewing on that. But with the smaller paracord, I wanted to burn it because they would tear that apart really quickly. So that's a quick, simple paracording lesson for for you. This one is just the, the one that we typically do to go around a pole in the Navy. There are much more fancier ones you can learn. My favorite is the XO pattern or the hugs and kisses pattern. I think you can look it up by either one of those names. That one is a little more extensive, takes a lot more time and a lot more paracord and it's typically done with at least two different colors. It looks amazing. I did a ladder for the smaller birds in that one in, um, a rainbow pattern and it was absolutely beautiful. I loved it. I'll have to dig through some older videos and try and find that one for you, but it did come out really nice. Um, that one came out really pretty, but it took a lot of time, especially with my arthritis. It took a lot of time, but it was worth it in the end. It came out neat. So those were the couple things we were going to show you today. Oh, did you hear the thunder? It's going to rain on our heads. Well, not ours, because we're in the patio, huh? It looks like kindergarten class happened in here yesterday. We've got toys everywhere. He was so happy just bouncing around in here. It's kind of the one place in the house, well, outside the house, where he can jump around and play without worry about the cats getting at him. So he loves being out here, absolutely loves it. Plus he can talk to the wild birds and the neighbors and he's, he's in love with the patio. But yeah, we're gonna get some rain today. I can you hear, I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder, but it's booming so we're gonna get some money. so I want to let y'all go with that those are my two little tips for finding toys again on a budget so yeah budget birdie toys can you say goodbye bye bye there's a half wave we're working on waving with him <laughs> bye guys